I don't think about pictures when I'm fucked. When I'm photographing, I see life. That's all there is, I, you know, I mean, in my viewfinder, it's not a picture there. You're not a picture. So many street photographers are treating people like a picture, a commodity. They're trading cards, Pokemon, trophies to be put on social media. But street photography as a whole can and should be ethical. Its continued practice is necessary. It's important to document the world around us, but if more and more people act unethically, we might be faced with stricter laws that affect ethical photographers as well. There's a lot being labeled as street photography that completely lacks ethics and feels exploitative in nature. And what is it? You just look you amazing no with permission. the sky. No, 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 You can do it with a crowd, not my face. And this isn't a kids these days kind of rant. This type of street photography has been around for 40 plus years and is practiced by photographers of all ages. It seems as if some photographers who do this type of street photography are largely reacting to the thrill of putting a camera in someone's face, often with the strobe, encroaching on their personal space without permission and seeing how they react. It's the opposite of documenting the streets, as some say they're doing. They're eliciting responses. There's no empathy or consideration given to the people they're photographing, which to me is antithetical to the nature of documentary you look, you photography. Look you look you amazing. You take pictures of me, bro. What are you doing over here? Take that out of your thing, bro. Whoa, wait, bro, wait. you can't take pictures of me. Sure. What the fuck are you doing over here? Sure. But listen to me. You I never fucking take a picture of somebody like me in your life. You understand? Okay. What the fuck are you doing? So how do we apply ethics to street photography? I think there are three moments in street photography that are basically checkpoints for ethics. At each point, you can make a decision to do something that mutually respects your subject, yourself, and photography as a medium. First is the physical act of making the photograph. Second is the content of the photograph. And third is the publishing of the photograph. So first checkpoint, how are you taking the photograph? In public, we come into close contact with people. It's not our job to make other people feel comfortable as we go about our daily lives. Someone might feel upset at the mere sight of a camera nearby, even if the photographer is focusing on architecture, ignoring the people walking by. This clearly is not the photographer's concern or responsibility, in my opinion. But is the photographer physically invading someone's space? Are they firing flash in someone's face? Are they stepping so close that the subject needs to alter their path or step backwards? You can't know how people are going to react. So how do you tell what's ethical? What's your name? Michelle. Grosso. Michelle, this is Michelle. Yeah. And what is your name? Josh. Josh and Michelle, annoying people on the boardwalk. <laughs> <laughs> and the truth is there are no clear cut answers. Most street photographers and photojournalists like myself know the law and what we're allowed to do from a legal standpoint, but legal doesn't equate to ethical. Tell them about Don't the law, tell, you, tell them about the law. Get the hell out of here. And judging by what you're okay with isn't necessarily a good standard either. It's clear from seeing people's reactions on social media that most people don't want a random photographer getting in their face with a flash. So even if you're okay with it, most people aren't. Maybe some people are too sensitive, but others definitely are too insensitive, so maybe let's find a reasonable middle ground. Second checkpoint, what's the content of the photograph? If you ask a street photographer why they do it, their answer will most likely center around photographing life, showing reality, or the everyday. And not everything in the world is good and happy and beautiful. People yell, they fight, they fall, they get hurt. I don't think we need to ignore these moments. I think what's important is intention and compassion. Henri Cartier-Bresson is basically the grandfather of street photography and he practiced humanist photography, which means he and his peers were focused on the everyday human experience. And this was a reaction to two world wars in Europe. So this wasn't a life is beautiful kind of approach. They took the good and the bad together. The difference between this and what I see so often now is that they photographed with empathy for their subjects. To me, this is a we're all in this together approach. There are moments of joy and times of sorrow, but we're all here living this shared human experience. And they were looking to document what they all felt. One place I feel like ethical standards are shifting and we're starting to come into agreement as a community is on photographing the unhoused, the addicted, the mentally ill. Increasingly, photographers are agreeing that we don't photograph them without consent. Now, there is absolutely a place for edgy and provocative photography that can address these topics, and it can be done treating subjects with respect. Larry Clark's series, Tulsa, from the 1960s and 70s is some of the most edgy photography around, even today. This was a crew of young people he ran with. He was showing their existence on the margins from the inside. He had empathy for his subjects 
because they were his friends. He was one of them. Dianne Arbus was born into wealth and that put her into dangerous territory when photographing outsiders, but she did it with their permission and their involvement. She got to know them personally. They trusted her. They invited her into their homes. Marielle and Mark photographed families in poverty, the mentally ill, and runaway teens living on the streets, but she did it by getting to know them. She knew their names, earned their trust, visited them regularly over a period of years, and again, always acted with empathy and compassion, a fantastic photographer and human being. This type of long-term, in-depth documentary photography is important because the subjects are consenting to be a part of it. To me, it's the only way to ethically cover these types of difficult topics. I've heard criticism of documentary photography that it doesn't matter if you have their consent, you're making money from their image. I see no ethical dilemma with making money to live and to support the creation of these important projects. Also, many times the subjects and others like them do benefit directly when the public learns of their stories. I also think that there are many people who feel overlooked by society that welcome the chance to be seen and heard, and they desire to help others in their situation. But it's difficult. Most photographers aren't willing or able to devote the amount of time necessary to building this type of relationship with subjects. It's easier to walk the streets until you see them, push a button, and just keep on walking. They're in and out of your life in a fraction of a second. Now the third and final checkpoint, how are you publishing the photos? When you're out taking photos, being in the moment, it's impossible to assess the morality of every single scenario that you come across. That's why this section focuses on the publishing of photos. I'm in the camp of shoot first, ask questions later. I'd rather take a photo and have it, then decide what I want to do with it, whether I want to publish it or not, and how. What are you doing with these images after you've taken them? Where are you publishing them and who might see them? This has some of the greatest potential for long-term impact. If you step in front of someone and fire a flash in their face, it might ruin their day, but if you post that photo online and it goes viral, it could be something that follows them for the rest of their lives. A photographer can make up for ethical lapses during the process of making photos by simply choosing not to publish them. It could also prove dangerous to subjects. A photographer photographs a mother and young children on the subway. He doesn't ask permission before or after the fact. He then puts the image on social media an hour later and says, I took this at lunchtime on the A train today. Well, what if that's your daily routine? There are dozens of ways this, is, this could lead to a dangerous situation for that mother and her children. What potential impact could posting a photo immediately have on a subject? The publishing capabilities of today are a large reason we can't draw direct comparisons to the street photography of the pre-internet age. Gary Winogram might take a photo and not develop that roll of film for months. From there, it might possibly be seen months after that in a gallery, maybe not. A museum exhibit or book might display an image years after it was taken. So a small number of these photos would be viewed by maybe a few thousand people at the most, years after they were taken. It would be extremely unlikely to affect the subjects of the photo in any way. Add to this, only an extremely small group of people practice street photography at this level in this period of time where their work would be published at all. Vivian Mayer photographed for decades with no intention to show anyone her photos as far as we know. To see her photos published for the first time 40 to 50 years after they were taken makes me wonder how many photographers could or would refrain from publishing their own images that might potentially negatively affect a subject. If it's really about documenting the world, would they be willing to hold them for five years, 10 years? If the goal is actually to provide a document of life, what would be the harm in waiting? The best and clearest way to be ethical is to obtain consent. If the subject agrees to have their photo taken, it can be up close with the flash of whatever they're doing. You've covered all three ethical checkpoints with one quick question. A lot of street photographers say asking that question ruins the candid nature of the image. But you can always take the photo, then ask the question. Some people might not approve of that approach, but I can say it works for me. Here are a couple situations where people were working and I asked first if I could take their photo and they consented. To me, these are still candid photos because they went back to doing what they were doing before I asked. They were busy, they had stuff to do, and it was more important to them that they focused on their work than me and what I was doing. Now, sometimes I'll take a photo first and then if I think it's a really good one, I'll say something to the person like, I took this photo and I can see you in it. Are you okay with that? And they'll usually say yes. If they say no, now I won't delete my photos because they're 
part of a historical document. They're part of my life and experience as well. But I will agree to not publish it. Developing your own ethics is a continuing process. If something didn't feel good, examine it and find out why. Build it into your worldview and make adjustments. We all make mistakes. I've taken photos I didn't necessarily feel great about. I've learned and grown along the way. If you dig in your heels and refuse to change, you'll stagnate. But thinking more deeply about your photography and the practices surrounding it will make your work better and deeper. We get you're in a public space doing your thing, yeah. right? Yeah. But like to come into our space in like close portrait range uh -huh. and like throw off what we're doing and uh -huh. then not even talk to oh, us. Okay. Let's do better. Let's be better people. Let's be good stewards of photography. What the fuck you doing? I'm documenting life on Madison. That's all I'm doing. It ain't a part of my fucking life. You get that shit the fuck out of here. Okay.